Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a good weekend. A uh, lot going on with me, but hey. Uh, <clears throat> it's what it is. Look, before I get off into this real briefly, I want to remind you that we are still raising funds for the work we're doing in the black community uh, with Black Men Lead, uh, Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Daughters, and more. It is immensely important that we receive the support necessary to really truly offer services at the level to meet the demand and the need. Uh, if you pay attention to the videos I'm talking about, it makes it obvious, the videos that I uh, uh, publish, it makes it obvious that there are needs within the black community that aren't being met when the ability or the uh, knowledge to meet it is there, but the capacity to meet it is not. Uh, we need to start supporting organization services and individuals who are committed to being at the grassroots and touching and keeping their hands on the pulse of what's going on in the community to do something about it. We are really suffering because we fail at that miserably. Uh, we have become experts at complaining. We have become experts at debating. We have become experts at everything except taking action and getting behind the things that matter. Uh, and on that note, I'm gonna talk about why I'm here to talk about, but we definitely need your support. Go into the description box, click the link. Uh, if you are more prone to Cash App, the organization's Cash App is also in the description box. But <clears throat> make something happen. Now, uh, the New York subway shooter. Uh, obviously, that's the things going on. Uh, I'm not going to get off into the deeper uh, throes of this that approach conspiracy. I want to talk about something that very few people are giving consideration to. Now, what's going to happen is, because the media controls the narrative, and there's a certain group of people who control the media, uh, what you can almost guarantee is that he's going to be grouped in the category with other white mass shooters. Uh, and he's going to be labeled an extremist. And you're probably going to also hear the term black identity extremist. You're going to hear the term terrorist. You're going to hear a bunch of other things. Uh, I want to look at something that we're not looking at that we need to be keenly aware of because it's a reality. And this situation is only getting worse. And I've been talking about this uh, for years now. And I've been predicting this for years now. And I've been watching it unfold before me uh, at the most unbelievably frustrated level because it's something that we can change. Okay, first of all, you got a person in one of the most crowded and densely populated areas on the planet, a New York subway during rush hour. Pops out 33 rounds, not one person dies no fatal or lethal wounds. I think it only six people even get hit out of 33 shots. Stevie Wonder would have did better. So what was the point? Well, when you study and look at this guy, he was frustrated. He had some concerns. He was talking about some political issues, geopolitical issues. He was informed, but he was frustrated. He had some things going on and this isn't an argument about whether it was a psychotic break. To me, what it looked like is he had been complaining and he didn't feel he had a voice. So he decided to create a bigger platform. He decided that his voice would be heard uh, at, 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 at its height and at its loudest. And he's going to pay one of the most extreme prices he can pay. He's going to pay, pay probably with the freedom, his freedom for the remainder of his life. Is what he's probably going to pay for. And the problem is, at the end of the day, nobody's actually going to listen because, again, we're going to let the media paint the narrative. Uh, Dr. Cleo Monago, uh, I think, did an unbelievable job in a very small period of time of breaking this down. Uh, and I suggest checking him out. 
and seeing what he has to say about it. But here's what I have to say. We have a history in this country. Our experience in this country is unique. Our experience in this country is unique. Uh, the experience of the black man is also unique even within the black collective. And no matter how loud we scream, no matter how loud we shout, uh, we aren't being heard. Uh, and the problem now is that we are becoming aware of just how bad things are and what it's doing to us. We're getting to the point to where we can literally predict the behavior. I predicted what's going on now. Uh, you didn't get black mass shooters, but they're starting to pop up, but their agenda is different. Their agenda isn't about uh, racism and things. It's about our plight. It's about what we see. It's about tired of not having a voice and having the power to exact change. What we see is a spike in suicide amongst young black males, especially under the age of 28. What we see is a, a spike even for our community in violence, primarily young black males. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the importance of black men lead. Not just the rite of passage important, which is because it is immensely important to properly socialize young black males, but I'm also talking about wraparound services for mental health, wraparound services for skills training, wraparound services for housing, wraparound services for so many things that provide the necessary skills, environment, self-confidence, self-awareness, and assurity that will allow young black males to go out into a world that is inherently hostile towards them and not only compete, but be winners. And we are failing at that. Not because we don't have the capacity to win, but because we don't invest in ourselves. We, we, we've actually been conditioned to point the finger and place the blame better than we have at pr providing solutions. Prime example, Will Smith. Will Smith goes out, slaps another black man. Two, and basically what you have is the collision of two traumatized black males. Both have been through trauma, noted trauma, cataloged trauma, and have actually received treatment. And yet they collide. Uh, we could talk about who should have did what, why it was wrong, and everything else. But at the end of the day, there's a situation in which a black man slaps another person unacceptable. Uh, while I get it, and I'm personally going to defend my woman as long as she's my woman. Uh, whether she should be as woman another thing, that's not what we're talking about here. However, in hindsight, we can sit up and say, man, that was that was that was a little bit overboard, all things considered, to some people. I'm like, there's certain things just I don't there's just certain things you're not gonna be able to do. I don't care where we at or what we do, it's just how I'm built and where I'm from. But we're not talking about me. We're talking about the general public. The general public is like, hey, Will stepped over the line. Okay, let's take that. But let me show you how we are. Go find another time that the dude did that. Stepped over the line, violated the Eurocentric idea of what's acceptable for men, especially black men. Tell me one other time. He's had an exemplary career. We are canceling the hell out of this dude. And we're leading the charge. We're leading the charge and they're feeding off of it. They threw it to us and we ran with it. We've been conditioned to do that. We've been conditioned to see the worst in ourselves and condemn ourselves at a greater level than they do. That also stems from slavery. I've written on that. We had to talk ourselves down. We couldn't, we could never present ourselves like we were mentally and emotionally strong. That scared the hell out of them. So we had to be weak. We had to beat ourselves down. Oh, that was so horrible of me. Look at how terrible I am. And, 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 and black women would have to sit up and, and, and with, for the fear of having their son sold out, talk about how worthless he was. You know, he ain't no good. He's a, he's a worthless man. And smack him around, you know, to show, you know, I got to always be on his ass. Because, and because if, if I, I big up to him, if I talked about how smart he was, if I talked about how creative, if I talked about his ingenuity, some of the things he's actually creating in that cabin, and, and talking about in that cabin, 
he becomes a, he, he becomes a higher higher price higher value commodity to you and now you're looking for uh, a chance to make money on him and plus you don't want the trouble of having to deal with his creative ass because he's going to be coming up with schemes so you're going to sell him off so I'm going to make him be the dumbest, stupidest, uncontrollable person on the, on the plantation. It happened all the time. It was the way that they protected their, their offspring. Okay, so we've got all these things that we're passing down. We've seen it, you know. Uh, little little, little, little uh, Chad, little Chad, Caucasian Chad gets 1A on his report card and mom loses her mind. He's so smart. He's this, he's that, he's all of this. Kedrick, little black Kedrick gets all A's. Mom talks about the A's but talks about how hard-headed he is and how he won't keep his room clean. And you wonder where that comes from. Why we find it hard to lift our people even when they are genetically our people much less talking about it from a scope of race. We are in a situation where we're losing because we have no unity. When J. Edgar Hoover was asked the great, what was the greatest threat to American uh, national security, his response was black unity. Why? He had saw what would happen with the Black Nationalist Party and the Black Panther Party when we came together, when we we joined forces when we treated each other like brother and sister, when we decided that there would be no one left behind, when we decided that young children needed food in order to learn, when we decided that young black men needed options and, and, and a place to explore the ideas that are flowing through their heads, we found, they found out that we can do some pretty remarkable and exceptional things. When they found out that someone as early as 19 years old could literally mobilize an entire community in one of the biggest cities in America, Chicago. I'm talking about Fred Hampton. When they found out what he could do within a couple of years at the age of 21, he was dead. Why? Because they fear black unity. And they've got us so conditioned now we won't even pursue it. Yeah, what does this have to do? Doc, what does this have to do with that guy killing that person? That guy was expressing himself. This wasn't about the normal reasons behind what we see with mass shootings. If you look at what he was talking about on his social media, on YouTube and different places, he was talking about uh, Supreme Court nominations and um, he was talking about uh, slavery. He was talking about things and how it's played out over time. He was showing that he was very well read. He understood what was going on and he was disenfranchised with where we were as a people. This is not me condoning what he did in the slightest. This is me saying this is going to be a continued problem in an increasing rate if we don't do it. And, 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 and all they're going to do is keep throwing us away and, and, and throwing the key away and using it to label us, using it to define us. You know, we're the only universally defined people. We're the only people in the world that when we see another black person do something, it impacts us as if we are going to be judged for it because we are. I remember growing up at the house and the news would come on in the evening mm -hmm. and there would be a story about somebody committing a crime and they would be talking about the crime and how horrible it was or whatever and they hadn't shown a picture of the suspect yet and the words that would be coming out of my grandmother's mouth, Lord, please don't let this be a black man. You know why? Because she's used to being judged for what black people who had no direct relation to her, relationship to her did. And we subconsciously be, be move and behave. We weren't so much offended by what Will Smith Smith did as were as we were about concerned about how we would be perceived, not as him being an individual, but that was a black man that did that. <clears throat> We've got work to do. I keep talking about it. And here's the thing, we have the capacity to do the work. But we don't share, we don't support, we don't get behind organizations. 
But I do find it interesting on another note that you fired 33 shots at anybody. He didn't go there to kill. He went there to make an emphatic statement. I'm going to tell you how. Okay. He goes there. He fires off 33 rounds, not killing one person. Leaves his ID. These dumbasses still can't find him. He goes and have, has uh, brunch or lunch or whatever at Cats and calls him and says, hey, look, I think you're looking for me. This is not normal behavior of a mass shooter. Normally, a mass shooter, if they're looking for to survive, they're looking to get away and whatever. But most of the time, they're looking to go out in a blaze of glory or they're going to surrender. This guy left went and ate and then said, okay, you guys are really slow, so let me call you. You look at his face in the photo that I've seen of the arrest and there's a sense of accomplishment. Now, I don't know in totality why uh, I haven't had a chance, not that I will, to really list, talk to him and ask questions, but I can assume he feel he got accomplished what he set out to accomplish. People know who he is now. And people will be personally going out and researching his perspectives and his point of view. You know, I think most state laws will, won't allow him to financially benefit from what he did. So it's not like he's going to get book deals and movie deals from this. But people will know who he is. And that's another problem. People can say everything they want to about the black man. He's the most demonized person in the world. Even, even and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we're perfect. There are some people out there that I'm ashamed to call my brothers because of the stupidness they do, especially when they do it to our women and our children. Uh, but there are a bunch of us out there busting our ass trying to make it happen and trying to do it the right way, trying to learn from our mistakes and trying to be better. But what I can tell you is that we're the most unseen. While we can say black women are the most unprotected, we can say black men are the most unseen and unacknowledged people in, in, in America. We can say that. We can say, uh, as Daniel Patrick Monahan did in the Monahan Report in 1965, that the natural behavior of the male species, of, in, uh, of any species of animal on the planet, the male struts, the male sprouts his wing, the, the peacock spreads to show off the the bantam rooster struts the four-star general struts matter of fact uh daniel patrick monahan says from the bantam rooster to the four-star general the male struts all except the black man well he said all except the negro says when the negro decides to hold his head up and square his shoulders he's a cocky nigger that's deserving of being lynched so we have been told forcefully that you are okay and acceptable as long as you remain docile. As long as you play along, as long as you show us that you are, you are a part of the team and you're going on with the game, we got you. Look at the people who are on in this world. Look at the people on this world, the Stephen A. Smiths and all of them. They go along, they play a game, they get paid well. The moment that one of us becomes vocal and unwavering in our blackness and we speak it like it is, we get broken down. We get put in our place. We get, we, we are, in the same way as slavery, we get used as an example of what happens when you get out of line. You are to be seen and not heard. You are to do as you're told. You don't have an opinion. We'll give it to you. But we're expecting these same men who don't, are not allowed to have an opinion, not allowed to have a voice, not allowed to speak, to be leaders, to be protectors. No, see, protectors have to be fearless. 
Protectors have to be willing to put it all on the line. Protectors can't be complacent and compliant. But we're demanding that in so many instances and we don't see it. You know, I could go on and on about this, but th that's what I saw. I, I, I see a person who wanted his voice heard and was willing to risk his life because he could have easily got caught and shot. There are a bunch of other questions that we can explore at another time. You know, how is it that he got off 33 shots, nobody's killed. Maybe he intended not to kill anybody. Maybe that was never his intention. Maybe his intention was the one way to get some attention around here is to start popping off rounds and, and, and get classified as a mass shooter. But then you have the question, how come there was no cops? I got my own opinion about that, but I'm gonna keep that to myself. Um, but how come there were no cops? How come none of the cameras in that particular area were working? There are a bunch of other things, but what I can tell you is, this is the truth. We're gonna to start to see an increased frequency in these type of events. Uh, now, the point that I wanna make here that I may not have been clear on making, so I'm gonna make it here, is that we are seeing an increased level of self-destruction. Now, sometimes the self-destruction is obvious. We, we got an increase in the suicide rate where it has spiked nearly 50% uh, in the last eight years. It had a 50% increase. That's, that's one form of self-destruction, literally killing ourselves. Another form of self-destruction is killing someone else or harming someone else or doing something extremely destructive that takes away your life in one form or another, whether it's your freedom or your actual life um, or the life of someone else. And then you have self-destruction in the form of what you see with this guy. His life is over. His life is destroyed. It's, it's done. It's a wrap. And we're going to see more and more of this until we decide that enough is enough. Till we decide that instead of saying I'm uncomfortable, I'm gonna behave like I'm uncomfortable. When you truly get uncomfortable, you move, you shift, you change positions, you do something different. It's time to stop talking about it. It's time to start being about it. It's time to make moves. It's time to do something. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. And I am challenging everyone, be a part of the solution again. Uh, we are in the midst of a fundraiser. The link to show how you can support the work we're doing is in the description box, so make it happen.